Hello again and thank you for watching Pave Tools Tip of the Week. I'm Phil Baylor and I'm here today to help educate you on some tips and tricks for the hardscape industry. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, click the notifications bell. Also, be sure to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Click on our website, pavetool.com. You'll be able to sign up there for our tip of the week. And that'll again, give you those tips and tricks for the hardscape industry. Today for the tip of the week, as you know, I love to take on new products or show new products that can be a tip or a trick for you as a hardscape installer. Today I have with me Randy Bianchi from Technoseal. How you doing, Phil? They've got a great new product called Sticky Stone, and this is for veneering stone on a vertical surface. It has other purposes too. I'm sure we're going to talk about some of those, but just a really great product, and I just want to dive into some of the little bit technical end of things and why I've chosen it as a tip of the week. So I guess I would really want to start out with myself, I'm old fashioned. So back in 1985, we started our hardscape business, but everything I knew as far as veneer stones was always masonry installed. So I guess I look at it now, I said, okay, new technology, latest and greatest. We have the sticky stone, so maybe just a little bit of explanation why. Sure, sure. So Technoseal developed sticky stone um, as an alternative to veneer mortar. And what this allows is for your average hardscaper who typically subcontracted these services out to a mason or didn't want to get involved or learn how to mix the mortar just right or how to mix it in cold temperatures or warm temperatures. It's a profit center and it's a, it's a way that they can do it even if they've never touched mortar before. So I want to talk a little bit about old versus new. So I'm used to doing original veneer with stone. I would put down a vapor barrier and then I'd screw on my mesh, which would be screwed every eight inches on center to a stud or whatever backing is behind the, the unit. And then we would um, put on a scratch coat for the stone to stick. And then we would actually butter the stones and stick the stones. So how many of them steps am I able to eliminate using sticky stone? Good question, Phil. So, so typically, usually two, as Phil said, um, you have the mesh step, you have the scratch coat step, Sometimes there's a cementitious waterproofer step, and then of course you're, you're actually veneer. So it's a four step process. With our process, it can be a one step process or a two, depending on what we're veneering to. So if we're veneering a standalone structure like a fireplace, a kitchen island, or a pillar, it can be a one step process. We can use sticky stone and adhere to plywood. We can adhere to tile board. We can even adhere to drywall and in internal applications. But if we're on an exterior wall and we want to make sure that there's no water penetration or moisture penetration into the dwelling or into, into an area, we would use a cementitious waterproofer on the surface prior, which will double as a scratch coat that we can then use our sticky stone and veneer right to. So that, yeah, that answers a lot of quick. Just explain real quickly how that, how that surface would work, how that preparation is for waterproofing. Sure. So typically if, if you're on a home, I know uh, the old way was plywood and like a Tyvek paper. They have new systems out like Zipboard, which doubles for, uh, as sheathing and insulation. Um, the only thing Sticky Stone really won't stick to is anything nylon, polypropylene, or polyethylene, so smooth plastics and things like that. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily go right on, say, a Tyvek paper, but what you could do is do a cementitious roll-on waterproofer, which would double as a scratch coat over one of those surfaces, and then you could veneer Sticky Stone. Or you can use a cementitious waterproofer on uh, a zip board or uh, something that's uh, uh, insulated sheathing onto that and then the sticky stone onto the cementitious waterproof. So that's just using a roller, rolling it onto your right. surface, let it dry and right. you're ready to go. Right, and some, some of them that's... you can trowel but the easiest ones are roll on. Okay, that's cool, very good. So I know there's competitive products on the market, other veneer adhesives for, for veneer stone. What would you say is the biggest advantage of the sticky stone? One of the biggest advantages over the, over the products, other products in the market, is the fact that there's very little to no waste. Um, the, the tube inserts into the gun, there's a plunger that pushes it out, and literally you extrude just about every bit of it. Um, even if you were to leave, uh, leave it in the gun and come back two or three weeks later, all you've got to do is literally pry what looks like a little cork off the end, which is the solidified at the end, and you can continue to extrude. It comes out like butter. There's no getting hard inside the tube or having to use an egregious amount of force. Um, on your ratio gun to get the stuff out, which is some of the things that I hear in the field with the competitors. And it does have a two year shelf life. So as long as it's stored above freezing or let's say above 35 degrees, you can keep it on the shelf for two years. Sounds pretty user friendly. <laughs> so 
So just a little bit of history, how this whole thing transpired. I'm obviously doing a little bit of facelift on our building here and I wanted to do some stone. I also was over to Baylor Brothers when they were redoing their showroom and they had Randy over there with the sticky stone. And I just talked to him about it and he says, you'd be foolish to do a full masonry installation. You should really consider sticky stone. It's so much easier, quicker and faster. So that's really what got me started on, uh, on this uh, product. And now we're gonna have some fun installing it. So maybe briefly you can just explain, and this is what really impressed me was quantity. So what the square footage is that this will cover, and then also we're going to talk about a whole case. Absolutely. So, so the, the sticky stone comes in a sausage like this. It's a, it's, a, it's a pliable tube, and this is the gun, and we'll show you when we start installing it exactly how to, how to uh, insert it in the gun and, and get it ready to go. But uh, a tube like this here generally uh, will do about 20 square feet of veneer. Pricing is right around $20 at, at your local dealer or wherever you purchase your products from. Uh, so that's about a dollar a square foot to veneer. So these come in a box like this of 15. So this does 20, 15 of them will do 300 square feet. So one box will veneer 300 square feet of thin stone veneer. Comes also on a pallet. Um, these boxes come on a pallet at 66 boxes on a pallet. So one pallet of this material will veneer almost 20,000 square feet of thin stone veneer. Just to put things in perspective. And when I do the math, just thinking about 80 pound bags of mortar, it, it's, it's staggering the amount of, I mean, obviously I can carry this around 300 square feet of adhesive, as opposed to bags and bags and bags of mortar mix, which is really sweet. So if you're thinking what Phil and I are thinking, I'm sure a lot of you hardscapers are skeptical. We know hardscapers, a lot of them are. Yeah, is this <laughs> stuff all it's cracked up to be? And I can tell you it is, but if that's not enough to convince you, the Technoseal Sticky Stone on YouTube, the link will be below here, and you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison of a traditional mortar installation and our Sticky Stone installation. Done by the same mason, same square footage, same material, and it's time-lapse. So you'll see a setup, and you'll also see the full duration of the job. And if that's not enough to convince you, I'm not sure what will. So I wanted to take a minute and show our viewers how easy it is to load and get uh, the Sticky Stone gun ready, ready to use. So you'll notice when it, when it comes inside the box, you'll be, you'll be greeted with an assortment of, of tips. Um, there's two sorts of tips. You have um, thin ones and uh, white ones, black ones. It doesn't matter what you use, as long as the opening is cut to a half an inch. The ones that come with the gun will need to be cut. If you order it by the case, you'll get uh, tips that come with the tubes that are already open to a half an inch. So all you're gonna need to do is remove the top you're going to pull the plunger back as far out as it goes and you're simply going to insert one of the sticky stone tubes down in. All you're going to need to do, there's a small ring, you either pry the ring off or just core out the little nipple on the end of the tube to allow the material to uh, come forward. I see what you're saying. You don't have to slice the whole end off like a piece of deli meat to get it open. You just need to snip the end off. And then, Phil, if I could have you uh, cut that to a half an inch. Use my eye on this one, Randy. Simply take that. It goes right on the top. Take your collar. Screw it down tight. Give it a couple of pumps. And the material will come right up there. You're ready to rock. So that's really, I'm just thinking out in my head, obviously I'm an old style mason, so I'm thinking it took me literally, or it took you, less than a minute or a minute and a half maybe to set up. I'd still be over there getting my mortar mixer, putting my mortar in there, right? You got all the dust, you're gonna put a dust mask on. So right. I'm just thinking, my mind's reeling. A yeah. Lot of, lot of advantages. And don't forget the tarps in case you spill mortar and all the dust afterwards and all the cleanup, et cetera. Right. We'll show you how easy it is to clean up. That's really cool. So again, it's a half an inch tube, and the way that we do this is we extrude a half an inch line, and we go every three inches on the back of whatever we're veneering. Vertical stone is rated at 15 pounds a square foot, and you do a, th uh, a half inch bead every three inches. So what happens if it's a heavier stone, veneer stone? So if it's heavier than 15 pounds, it shouldn't be much heavier, but if it is, you can close your gaps. Instead of doing every three inches, you can do it every two, and that'll give you the extra strength that you need for a little added weight. 
So now I'm ready with this stone. You're ready to install. rock. You got it. That is so cool. So here we are with our corner piece that we just applied sticky stone to. And we're going to set that here on the corner. Give it a little wiggle and the sticky stone will do the rest. No sag. Again, you, you can set it against the ground. You can set it on a brick shelf. You can set it on pins, but you'll only need um, to do that just to get your, your bottom row. We used a few rocks here just to get our level in line with the, uh, the joint on the CMU block. And now that we have that, we're ready to rock. So you can see we have our bottom course down. We're gonna do four pieces in a row, just so you can see how quick and easy and how quick it actually goes. So we're gonna glue four pieces here and we're gonna stick them all on one after the other. So it's got that half inch bead every three inches. Again, this is veneer stone rated at 15 pounds a square foot or less. You can see how clean and easy this is. There's no dust, there's no mix in mortar. We're not worried if mortar's setting up. If I love it's... how easy it is to pull a trigger. I run a lot of caulking guns in my day and this really makes it sweet. And the other reason that we're doing a vertical bead is so that if you do get a driving rain on an outside surface, the water can run down behind without getting pulled up and caught behind the veneer piece. If you have an interior application, you probably could do horizontal if you really wanted to, but for out, outside, it's definitely vertical. All right. You grab one, I'll grab one. You can see we have our base core, so there's no sag. The material actually does really well on its own, but we don't have to hold it and we don't have to brace it. And we don't have to wait for the bottom course to harden up over an hour before we can start to go up. We can go as fast as we can glue. So we'll talk a little bit about cleanup. It cleans up really well with a rag. If it does get on a residue, it can be cleaned up with either mineral spirits or xylene. Once the material hardens after 24 hours, it'll be a mechanical removal on certain areas um, if you get a little messy with it. But we've come to the end, the end of our first tube. I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to change and how uh, little waste there is. So we're just gonna unscrew that collar. Okay, and you can see this is clean. The tube is clean all the way down. That's cool. And all we have is a little disc, basically our sleeve. And you don't have to reuse this. You can throw this out because in the box will come, uh, I'm sorry, it's this one here. In the box will come one of these with each tube if you buy it by the box. But if you are going to reuse your nozzle, that's your waste right there. So all you need to do is now insert your next tube in a clean tube. Again, you're going to cut the nipple off of the end. And then you're going to basically take your existing nozzle and collar, screw it down, bingo. That's super simple. Simple as could be. I like how it's very little waste. But that's that's legitimately it right there. That's this is your yeah. That's your waste. Pretty minor. Yeah, and it's all compressed and the inside's clean. So there's really no, and, and if you were, let's say this is the last job of the day, you could toss this whole thing and just put the collar on and you don't even have to, you don't even have to wipe any there, clean, you know, so. Very nice. Yeah. Pretty slick. So here we are, Got another piece, Phil. You think that's on pretty good? Yeah, that should be on real good. Why don't you try pulling it off? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I 
did get it. <laughs> there you go. That was, I was Keep, putting my all in Check that. out, look at, the, look at the height of those peaks. Yeah. Just that to give you an impressive. idea. Of the, yeah. Go ahead, stick it right back on. All right, I'm sold. <laughs> that is so cool. Awesome. Special thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the notifications bell. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Check us out on pavetool.com to sign up for our tip of the week. We hope to see you again.